Today, we're inside the Boulder Center for Sports Medicine, where I'm about to experience their bike fit process. Well, I'm here with Jeff and Todd, and I'm about ready to start the bike fit process. Jeff, um, two quick questions before we get started. Uh, why get a bike fit? What is the purpose of it? Well, there's, there's a couple of uh, reasons to get a bike fit. One is to make sure that you're comfortable on your bike. Uh, two is to prevent any potential for injury that you may have. And three is really to improve your performance. And usually when we do a bike fit, we're doing them for either one or all three of those reasons. So who would best be suited to get a bike fit? Well, I think anyone that rides a bike any more than you know five or ten minutes a day would, would certainly benefit from a bike fit because you really want to make sure that we're meeting all three of those criteria that I just discussed. Okay, well let's get started. Now I've got infrared sensitive markers on Gina's legs. We've marked the um, top of the foot here, the front of the knee, the ankle bone, the joint line of the knee, and then the hip bone. And she has seven cameras on her that'll be watching these markers. And what we'll get are readings of joint angles and knee alignment and hip motions, all while she's riding the bike. What we're going to be looking for are normal limits in all of those movement patterns to make sure the bike is fit properly. The first thing that we notice about this bike position is that it, it's really aggressive. Um, her handlebars are very low with respect to the saddle and they're very far away from her. Um, when she goes to hold on to the handlebars, she goes right to the tops here. The default hand position should be all the way out on the brake hoods. What we're going to need the video for is to see if the saddle's in the right spot. And that's why we have the markers on the legs. Um, that's something that we can't really see with our eye. We really have to record those angles dynamically. Um, but a lot of the upper body stuff we can see with our eye. We do have um, a camera coming in from the side just to look at her upper body. But what we're going to be concerned with with the video mainly are her legs and how her legs are moving. Well, what we're looking for is a a stable pelvis, a pelvis that does not move. Um, and what we're looking for from the back is a straight ankle. So a foot that does not tilt in or tilt out. So we want a straight leg and we want a stable pelvis. When we shoot the video, we want to make sure that your pedaling like you would be outside. We don't want you just soft pedaling like you are now. We want you riding like you would be out on a normal ride. And we're going to shoot 10 seconds of video starting right now. We've taken your stick figure and we've calculated a side view. Your hips and your knees should line up right over top of each other. We use this a lot to pick up leg length inequalities or people that aren't exactly symmetrical. Um, it appears that you're just a little bit rotated right side forward on the bike. Your saddle's a little bit on the low side. We have to raise your saddle about five millimeters or a centimeter. Um, we also know from your knee alignment over the cranks that we need to move your saddle forward a little bit as we raise it. So we're going to raise your saddle and we're going to move it forward. Then with the front end of the bike what we want to do is bring your hands back and up and straighten you out a little bit so you're a little bit more comfortable and you're not reaching so far to this, the brake hoods. Properly positioned road bike um, should have handlebars that are accessible in three positions, the tops, the hoods, and the drops. What we see from you now is we have to make you come out to the hoods, which is where you should really spend about 80% of your time on the handlebars. The way your legs move is from the front view is not exactly even as well. Your right knee has a tendency to track inside the foot, or knock knee, and your left knee kicks outside the foot, or bow-legged. So what we call this is windswept. It's like there's a strong wind blowing from the right side. This is all going to be affected at the cleat pedal interface. So we're going to adjust your cleats to get your knees tracking straight. So now we're going to make a bunch of changes to the bike. And then we're going to do this all over again and show you before and after the differences. So the 
first thing we want to compare here is the, the side view video. It shows your upper body, your whole body position on the bike. So this is before we made any changes. This is with your old stem, this is with your old saddle position, and you can see that the reach is really long, the reach is really low, and you're, you're really um, closed up in the hip. So you're probably not pedaling as fast as you could be. You could get some low, low back and neck problems from this position if you ride this for too long. Now you look at after the changes are made. So this is with our stem, and we raised your saddle one centimeter, and we brought your saddle forward one centimeter. And you can see the reduction in the stress on the, the neck, the back, the hands, and a much more open hip angle. Well, that wraps up the bike fit process, and I certainly learned a lot today, mainly that I really didn't know how uncomfortable I was on my bicycle until we did the initial changes in the settings, um, simple readjustments such as bike seat and handlebars and even in my cleats. So I, I really feel that a bike fit is necessary for anybody that would like to have longevity in the sport, whether you're a beginner or an elite athlete. And I would highly recommend coming to the Center for Sports Medicine because the process that they put me through gave so much information and information that if I didn't remember it today, I could walk away with a handout that explained exactly what we did.